Welcome to my channel, Reader Woman. My name is Judy, and let's talk uh, my little series, first chapter read along. I decided that for my next book, I was going to read uh, Skeen's Leap by uh, Joe Clayton, who is one of my favorite sci-fi fantasy authors. Um, and this is actually, I think, I'm pretty sure this was the first book I read of hers. Um, I know that I was talking about first chapters, <laughs> reading the first chapter, but looking at this, the chapters are like nothing. So I think I will read a couple of pages. And, um, but, you know, before we get started too much, um, the reason I really love or loved her books, and, you know, I haven't, I haven't read them for a little while, but they are female-centric. Um, she has strong female characters. I liked Skeen because Skeen is not your typical hero character. She is rather dark and immoral at times. Um, when she's on your side, for the most part, you're pretty happy about it, but there are some moments you're not. So this one, I, this was the first one I've read of hers. Now she did a whole series based on a character named Elatus, uh, Diadem from the Stars and da 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 da, which I read after this uh, because she wrote, I don't know, six or eight of them, quite a few uh, in the series. Not my favorite, but some of my favorite characters came out of that. So let's start with Skeen's Leap. Chapter heading. Run, Skeen, and bless Jabo for long legs, or the woman betrayed. Toward sundown, Skeen heard the howls of a Sayunka pack and knew the Paja were after her. At Zabani, you miserable snitch. She had walked out of Chunksa with a gaggle of low-level workers heading to their hovels for supper and a snuggle. She had left them behind, moving briskly along access ways until she reached the edge of the cultivated land. There she curled up for a few hours sleep. The Sayanga howls were getting closer. Must have gone this way. At Zabani, promising silence, waited until she left, then went worming around to the Mai Pijit. Selling me, selling me, selling me! She settled the pack more comfortably, heavy pack loaded with survival gear she bought black market from that miserable worm. She stretched long legs into an easy lope, running through a sort of generic scraggle over ground that was sand soft and slippery with sprays of gravel put there to roll underfoot and wreck an ankle. Lousy nature. Miseries leaping at you from every lousy bush. Give me city streets any day. Any city. The hills were getting steeper, the land rising around her, funneling her into a crack that turned swiftly from ravine to canyon. The trouble with country you don't know is all the things you can put your foot in like a dead-ending canyon, which this might well be. She shivered as the howls of the Sayungas pounded at her, too easy to let that ugly sound prick her into panic. Easy and stupid. T'was said in Chakansa, sorry, that when <laughs> Sayungas howl, someone is dead or caught. Not me, she told herself, never, not me. Fucking canyon, what now? Instinct and logic said keep to flat ground, easy ground, so she wouldn't run herself out. Forget instinct and logic. She went scrambling up the side of the canyon, a steep slant of crumbling stone, cursing Thibaut for running out on her, cursing Atsabani for selling her, cursing herself for being a blazing fool, jamming her fists into cracks in the stone and levering herself high. Turn back 12 days makes a runer run. I don't believe it. She chopped off the words before she said something irretrievable. Had to be careful. Her papers wouldn't stand a search. 
Captain Fleur, you're, you're talking about? We had an appointment tonight. What do you mean he's left? Exactly what I said, Vende. There is nothing difficult about the words. Six of the little Hanjuk's tentacles played an irritable tattoo on the countertop. His three front eyes drooped shut and he exhaled a gust of sour, spicy air, enough to make her gag. She waited. He cracked his eyes and was visibly annoyed to see her there. With exaggerated patience, he said, Three hours ago, Captain Fleur removed the ship called Angel Baby, registered to the Jagine Combine from the slot he was assigned in the Orbit Park and departed. Filing destination papers is not required. Is there a question or of a complaint? He stopped squeaking at her. He was using his most formal mode of speech, an unsubtle insult in itself, and waited with a frozen tentacle, poised to see if she'd have the gall to bother him further. No, I was only surprised. Mouth clamped shut and a hard hand on her temper. She left the shuttle registry and started back across the gap to the city. No use throwing a snit. Hanjiuka more like that. She couldn't afford to draw attention to herself. Bad papers and little money. A face and name tucked into too many files. She'd be lucky to make a work camp if the Hanjiuka discovered who and what she was. Not that a work camp was anything to aspire to. <laughs> you didn't live long there. You didn't live well. And who gave a damn? Not Hanjiuka, that's sure. Tibbo, Tibbo, why'd you do it? How'd you do it? How'd you get my pick a fairy to so let you? Short treatise on Kildun Alda, or why skiing has false papers. Kildun Alda is the only habitable planet in a star system, sitting alone in a gap between two star arms, a strategic position that a number of star-faring species have found irresistible. There is vegetation and a wide variety of insects, but intelligent life that has never developed, probably because Alda's sun has a habit of flaring, the flares reducing to ash all life on the surface of the world. Eight species have held controlled of, control of Kilden Alda, not counting the Hanjiukum, who are its present masters, and have left behind layer upon layer of ruins. Evidence, scanty, suggests lots of small smoldering wars among neighboring star systems, with first one, then another of the eight species gaining ascendancy until the smolders finally exploded into a conflagration that wiped away nearly all signs of who and what the eight were, except on Kilden Alda. The planet is a treasure house of rare and priceless artifacts. When this was discovered, the Hanjiukum were quick to lay claim to the system and brought a dozen family fleets to make that claim stick. Hanjiukum are massive beings with horny skins, short stubby legs, six, and dozens of specialized tentacles. Presumably they find themselves cuddly and lovable, but few others do. Annoying them is impol impolitic. They squeeze a grudge tighter than a prophet. Nothing annoys them more than a runer poking around. Runer, a specialized smuggler, thief, plunderer. A runer deals in artifacts from mostly dead civilizations, a thriving and lucrative quasi-legal profession. There are innumerable juicy ruins about and even more collectors avid for new acquisitions. Skeen. A runer of considerable note, having been successful at the profession for more than 40 years. Anti-aging shots keeping her fit and sassy. Her ship and her name are widely known, which is why she has forged papers, and her ship, Pekarafi, has a new name. Pekarafi was dryly sarcastic about the choice of Angel Baby, and why Tibbo was registered as Shipmaster Captain. Skeen stumped scowling across the gap and back into Chikunsa, winding from the more decorous streets near the Great Gate to the warehouse district, where life was more to her taste and her purse. Immersed in unhappy thoughts, 
She stalked along, ignoring the noise and buffeting, slapping away a pickpocket's hand, swerving automatically from a cut purse's slicer. Glaring down at a stubby, drunken spacer who seemed to think that anything female was selling. He had to be very drunk to come to, on to her. She wasn't the sort to attract this kind of thing most days, and especially not now. Thin and dark, a nothing much face, about as much shape as a fence rail, showing mad as a skinned tickle. What Thibault used to say when she lost her temper at something. Crazy as a skin tickle and half as sweet. Tibbo, you bastard. I'm going to run you down, she promised the air. You miserable lump of duplicity. I'm going to carve your hide from your worthless carcass a strip at a time and feed it to your raw. With no one chapter, <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it at that. If you're interested, highly recommend it. Great. I think I'd probably call it... Well, isn't all sci-fi fantasy YA in reality? Anyways, great little series. It uh, has three books to the series. And uh, yeah, take care. And we'll talk soon. Let me know if you've ever read any of Joe Clayton or Skeen's Return. Or Skeen's Leap. <laughs> There's Skeen's Leap and then Skeen's Return and Skeen's uh, Search. So I don't think those are in order. But yeah, take care and keep reading. Bye.